Good morning, kids. It's wonderful to see you on this beautiful Sunday morning. I hope that you're doing well. I want to welcome you back to our live children's church website. Uh, my background looks a little bit different today because I'm actually uh, in my office doing this live webcast. So I want to welcome you to my office. Many of you kids know because you spend a lot of time in my office. But anyway, so do you have your Bibles with you today? I would like to have you take out your Bibles and we're going to be in two different books. We're going to be in for briefly in Matthew 28 verses 16 through 20 and Acts chapter 1 and 2. It's going to be a broad overview of Acts 1 and 2. So both of those books are in the New Testament just to kind of give you an idea of where to look for it. Okay. So I'm going to start by telling you that in the Old Testament, we're in the New Testament, but this is what happened in the Old Testament. God's spirit came upon a special few people that God chose, such as prophets and priests and leaders or kings. Um, but in today's part of the big God story, God's spirit came on many people in a new and different way. After Jesus rose from the dead and after dying on the cross, he stayed on earth for 40 days and he spent time with his, his disciples. His disciples touched his scarred hands and feet. They had meals together. They talked. They walked together. They hung out for 40 days. And, you know, in that time, while they were spending time with Jesus, Jesus gave them two very important instructions. The first instruction was that they were to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that he commands us. And the second instruction is, is that he wanted them to not leave Jerusalem. He wanted them to wait for the gift of his father, a gift that was being promised to them. And you can actually find that in Acts 1 verses 4 through 5. So why was being baptized with the Holy Spirit something important enough to wait for? Well, let's think about who the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is God. He is our helper. He helps people realize that they need salvation. He helps people who are who saved uh, who are saved. Um, he helps us uh, by talking to God the Father about whatever it is that we need. Um, you're getting a little bit ahead on the on the on the uh, pictures there, so we're not quite there yet. But the Holy Spirit was good news for Jesus's friends then it is good news for us too. So on the day when Jesus went back to heaven, and there's a picture right now, you can kind of see that God, or Jesus, I should say, is, is like in the sky or starting to go up and the disciples are there and they're watching him as he's ascending to heaven. And you know what? He wanted to remind them, you're going to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And after he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes in a cloud that hid him from their sight, and he wasn't, they couldn't see him anymore. That had to have been an amazing thing for them to see. So isn't that awesome that they would have been able to see firsthand what took place? So the disciples, they stayed in Jerusalem just as Jesus had said, and he asked them, um, you know, for for them to do this in obedience to what he'd asked. And so 120 of Jesus's friends, they grouped together. They stayed in a place called the upper room, praying and waiting for the Holy Spirit to come. And then 10 days later, as the disciples celebrated the day of Pentecost, God's spirit changed everything. Are you ready for this? Well, that's a little bit too soon. Um, so we're not quite at that point yet on the slides. So are you ready for this? If you want to go to chapter 2 and verses 2 through 4, it says you can read with your very own eyes 
um, you know, what has happened next. The Holy Spirit came to baptize Jesus' friends. Now, many of you are going to think that being we're talking about being baptized in water, but we're not. This is a different baptism. Um, this is the type that is, is called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So here's the three signs that came. The first sign was is that Jesus' friends heard a sound like a mighty wind rushing, rushing through the room that they were in. And then they saw what looked like tongues of fire that were resting over the tops of their heads. Wow. Hey, cool. And nobody was catching on fire. <laughs> and then they began speaking a language that they had not learned. Everybody was amazed. Can you look? They're like marveling as they're looking at each other because they're seeing that they have the tongues of fire to, over their heads. So there was a crowd outside, if you want to move up to the next slide. A crowd of thousands of people were on the outside, and they came to see what was happening. They were like wondering what in the world was, was all of that commotion that was going on. And, and some people asked, well, what does this mean? Peter, Jesus' disciple, who just a few weeks earlier had been too scared to admit that he knew Jesus got up and he boldly started to preach. And if you want to move to the next slide, he's going to be talking to this large crowd that you see there. And you can see that he's kind of up a little bit higher than the rest of the people. And Peter said, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. That was really exciting news. The Holy Spirit was for everyone who loved Jesus, not just for special people who were prophets, priests, or leaders, or kings. Peter told the crowd of people about Jesus, and he explained using uh, the, the Bible verses uh, that the Jewish people knew that Jesus is the Messiah, the one God who promised to send, uh, that God promised to send so the people could be in a right relationship with him. And you know what? The people listened and they believed. And then they asked, then what shall we do? Peter went on to tell them that you need to repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. The Bible tells us that about 3,000 people believed in Jesus that day. Did you hear that? 3,000 people had been listening and they believed that Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of God. That's really exciting. And they believed that all in those few moments. You know, that very day, the very first church was born. The Holy Spirit changed everything. You can move up the, to the next slide if you'd like to. Um, it says the Holy Spirit changed everything and exactly that, that is exactly what happened. God spoke through Peter to tell us about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And Acts 2.39 says, The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. And you know what? That includes you and that includes me. So if you're a believer in Jesus, the gift of this baptism in the Holy Spirit is for you. You know what? I was baptized in the Holy Spirit when I was 15 years old, and my life changed tremendously. I loved the Lord, and I was saved when I was six years old. But when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, I was given um, a more of a, a, a power and a desire to share the gospel with others. I was not afraid anymore. And my witness was that Jesus lived in me. And so God wants that for you. I mean, Jesus lives in you when you accept him as your savior. But when we're baptized in the Holy Spirit, he gives us that additional unction to share the gospel and to be a witness for him. So I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm trying to say. Um, so if you believe in Jesus as your personal Savior, you can pray and ask to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And we've talked about this in Children's Church before, and we've actually prayed for that before. And when we gather again, we'll do that again. You know what? The Holy Spirit changes everything. He helps us. 
He changes us from the inside out to be more like him, to be a witness for him day in and day out. He gives us power to live for Jesus so others want to hear about Jesus. And so, you know, right now I'd like to pray with you and ask you if you'll bow your heads and your hearts with me in just a moment so that we can pray and ask for the Holy Spirit to bring baptism upon you. And after I get done praying, don't go anywhere. I have a little video clip that I want you to watch. And then I'll come back and say our goodbyes until next Sunday. But let's bow our heads and our hearts and let's just ask the Lord to lead us and guide us during this time. Father God, I thank you and I praise you for this message. Father, I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you that your Holy Spirit gives us, Lord, that additional power, Lord God. Father, so that we can be that witness that you're calling and ask us to be, Lord, to the world that does not know you, Lord. Father, I ask that it would help you to help us to be like Peter, who was afraid only just a few weeks before. But when he was baptized in the Holy Spirit, you gave him the words to speak and you gave him that power to live without any fear, Lord God, to share the gospel wherever it is that you would send him. And as a result of that, Lord, 3,000 people came to know you and accept you that day. And so, Lord, we're asking for that same baptism today for us. Fill us afresh and anew if we've already been baptized in the Holy Spirit. And for those, Lord, that have not been baptized, Lord, I ask this morning, in Jesus' name, the baptizer, that you would baptize any child in the Holy Spirit or any adult that may be listening this morning. Father God, I ask that you would bless them, strengthen, and encourage them, Lord. Father, help them to get through this week. Father, I bless you and I thank you for the opportunity to be together with them this, again this morning. Father, I ask this in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. So you hold on and you watch this video, okay? And then I'll come back for a split second and say goodbye. Stories of the Bible. God sends the Holy Spirit. These are the apostles. Hello. They followed Jesus during his time on earth. Before Jesus went to heaven, he told them to stay in Jerusalem until God sent the gift he promised. See ya. So after Jesus went to heaven, the apostles stayed in Jerusalem along with the other people who believed in Jesus. One day they were all gathered together when there was a sound from heaven like a mighty windstorm. Whoa! Then what looked like flames appeared and settled on each of them and everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gave them the ability to speak in other languages and so they started speaking. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, they came running to see what it was. What's going on? When they saw the believers speaking in their own languages, they were shocked and amazed. Hey, do you hear this? They wondered, how can this be? These people are from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages about the wonderful things God has done. What can this mean? Nah, whatever. But others in the crowd didn't believe that it was really a miracle and thought the believers were just acting oddly. Nah. Then Peter stepped forward and shouted to the crowd, Hey, all you! Listen carefully, all you! He told them that they were not acting strangely, but that this was from God. He reminded them that God said this would happen long ago. Then Peter told them about how Jesus was crucified, but then raised to life again, just as God had said he would be. He told them that Jesus was now in heaven and that God had given the Holy Spirit to them as he had promised. Peter's words changed what the people thought and felt, and they asked, Brothers, what should we do? Peter told them, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Wow! Peter continued to preach to the crowd for a long time, and those who believed what Peter said were baptized. 3,000 people were baptized and added to the church that day. Then all the believers listened to the apostles' teaching and practiced what they taught. Hey! They met together in fellowship, shared meals, and prayed together. They were amazed as the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders.
all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. Here you go. Take this. Ah, oh, thank you. They helped those in need. Here, this is for you. Thank you. Worshipped together at the temple every day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy all while praising God and enjoying each other. And each day, God added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video this morning, and I want to say I love you, I miss you, and I can't wait for us to get back together again. Uh, be in the Word this week. It's very important that we spend time in God's Word every single day so you can hear His heart for you, and I ask that you just um, keep this whole COVID-19 thing in continued prayer and just have a marvelous week of school, and I'll see you again on Friday. And I'll see you again next Sunday. So you take care. God bless. I'll be praying for you. And I'll see you then. Bye now. I told you this would be exciting. Now hold on there, little honey. So what do you need? I must get back to my work now. <laughs> Did you see the look on the face of that guy? Jesus is Lord over all. <laughs> Oh, brother, what's all the yelling about now? <laughs> no prayer is too big or too small for the Lord. Bye, kids. Arr, arr.